Helen Keller's speech about her college experience at a meeting of her class at Radcliffe, circa 1903-1904. It must be a great pleasure to you to shake hands with old friends and classmates and to recall the happy school life you have passed. Though the days of my school life are still about me, it is a pleasure for me to come to this gathering. I come not to renew old associations, but to begin new ones. The conditions under which I work are such that I have not often been able to attend the meetings of the clubs to which I belong or to which I have been invited. It is not indifference which prevents me from joining in the frolics of my classmates. My separation from them is inevitable. I have had moments of loneliness when the girls have passed me on the stairs and in the lecture rooms without a sign. I have sometimes had a depressing sense of isolation in the midst of my classmates. There are times when one wearies of books, which after all are only symbols of the spirit, and when one reaches out for the warm, living touch of a friendly hand. But I understand perfectly how the girls feel. They cannot speak to me, and they do not see the light of recognition in my face as we pass. The situation to them must be strange and discouraging. I have been asked to tell you something about my college life. I fear me there is little in it that will interest you, for it is pressed between the covers of books. You will not misunderstand me if I say that much of my life in college has been tedious. Slowness was unavoidable in the manual labor of Miss Sullivan's task and mine. Most of the books I have read are not in raised print, and I have had them spelled out in my hand word by word. This year the difficulty is less, for kind friends are having books copied for me in Braille. What a new grip my mind gets upon words which have come to it through my finger ends. Another difficulty has been that I cannot make notes in class. When I go home, I jot down in Braille what I remember of the lectures. This takes extra time. Moreover, I must depend largely on my memory to retain what my fingers have gathered. So my pleasures in what we call college life are necessarily few. But they are all the keener for that reason. I enjoy the chats with the girls and the stimulating experience of sitting under different instructors, some of whom have been very kind to me. I like, too, the little feeling of competition with others and the wee gossips that seem too trivial to record soberly as one of the pleasures of a senior, but which we all know are a large part of college life. In study, I have fallen heir to no end of delight and interest. How eagerly I look forward to a new book. It binds my life closer to that of the world. As I read, there is a sound in my ears. It is the voice of fancy. There is a light before me. It is the radiance of poetry. This year I have taken up my Latin again and am reading the comedies of Plautus with growing pleasure. I also am studying English literature of the 19th century. The essayists are delightful. Lamb, Haxlett, and Hunt knew how to present their ideas with lightness, delicacy, and grace and point out new beauties in the everyday world. College has breathed new life into my mind and given me new views of things, a perception of new truths and of new aspects of the old ones. I grow stronger in my conviction that there is nothing good or right which we cannot accomplish if we have the will to strive. The assured reality and nearness of the end of my school days fills me with bright anticipations. The doors of the great world are flung open before me and a light shines upon me the light kindled by the thought that there is something for me to do beyond the threshold. And indeed, for all earnest college graduates, there is a great work in the world, work that they can do in sweet, unaggressive ways. There are harsh customs to be made, sweet with love, hearts in which a kind, tolerant, brotherly love must be awakened, time-hallowed prejudices that must be overthrown. One evil that must be checked is the ignorance of the learned who have never learned the simple, honest language of the heart, which is the most vital of all, and is more satisfying than all the Greek and Latin ever written. Thus I have groped my way through college, reaching out in the dark pathway for wisdom, for friendship, 
and for work. I have found much work and abundant friendship and a little wisdom, and I ask for no other blessedness.